introduce you to my friend Randy. This is Randy. He is a rescue dummy from a local fire department. So he has some definite singe on him. So if you noticed that there is some scrapes and some black scuffs and stuff, that is from them using him for practicing safety removals. He is about 165 pounds and I literally cannot lift him hardly at all. I don't know if it's because of the joints and stuff. But today we are gonna use Randy to look at how we dress and put someone in a casket. All right, so I have a dress shirt, a tie, and pants. Often do we do not get undergarments. Sometimes we will use the plastic undergarments as you have seen in my video explained. Today we're just not gonna use any undergarments. We're gonna keep it simple. The strap is permanent, so try and ignore that that is there. That's for the fire department when they do their practice. So we're gonna show how to put on some pants and shirt and a tie and get Randy all ready for his viewing. Now, the first thing we're going to do is the pants. What I'll often do is lay them over the deceased like this. So as they're over the deceased, what I like to do is put my hands, you feed it up and through the pant leg. So that way, then you grab hold of the foot, you can lift, and slide that pant leg over. We'll go on a lot easier. And what we often find, so that knee joint, the leg may be stiffened from the embalming process. But this knee joint is gonna keep that leg usually all together and straight so you can pivot it in one motion as you're doing it. So then I'm gonna do the second leg. What you'll find is if you go too far with this first leg, you can't pull the pant back down. So you have to move the pant down. Usually I'll go up to about the knees. He's a little, because his feet are not mobile, I almost have to do him a little different. Same thing. I put my hand in first, grab the foot, and then feed the pants on him. And then just work the pants up. Now once you get up here, the buttocks is going to be heavier and weighted down. So you can't just slip them up over the buttocks. Now here is where that physics comes into play again, is that we want to make sure we get this up and under him, up to his waist. So you lift the leg, and if you bring it up, you've got to use your whole body. So I'll often get it right here up in my shoulder, and sometimes you just have to lift and up, and the hip will come up as well when you do that lift. Same with this side. You get the whole leg up. Now, because he's so bendy since he's a removal guy, it's a little harder with him to show you what I'm talking about. I guess he, his leg usually wouldn't do this. However, if someone was unembalmed, they would also be this bendy. But you lift and get those hips up. And get the pants where they need to be. You definitely need some muscles and um, knowing how to maneuver the body with this those pivot points or those I guess almost fulcrum points um, on the body has been one of the more crucial things to learn. And don't forget to zip. When I first started dressing deceased, I remember calling one of the other funeral home directors in and saying, you know, I need some help dressing somebody. When are you going to be here? 
And he finally said to me, Carrie, there's not going to be somebody around all the time. You really need to, have to figure out how to do this. And that is when I really started figuring out how the body was laid out and points of the body and how to maneuver that, not to be a pun, but dead weight where someone can't help you roll themselves, someone can't help you lift the leg or, hey, can you scoot your hand over just a little bit? You have to figure out how to do it yourself. So the next thing we're gonna do is put on his shirt. So if there was a t-shirt, you would put that on first. Um, usually I'll do, it's one of two ways. You can do one arm at a time and then stretch it up over the head and then bring the other arm up and through. It depends on how much movement the embalmed arms and neck have. So you kind of have to sometimes play with it if you're not cutting clothing. So I'm going to dress him first with the clothing not cut and then we're going to put it on cut so you can see the difference and how I would do it with both ways. So again, knowing how a body moves is very crucial. So I will open the sleeve, put my arm in, just like I did for the pant leg. Side note, this is my favorite color. Kelly green is what it's called. Favorite color ever. And not because my niece's name was Kelly, but just because just something about this color makes me happy. So then I'll pull it up to about the elbow. I'll button the sleeve so that I know it's going to stay right at, or I'm going to button the cuff so I know it's going to stay right here at the wrist. The rest of the shirt, you want to make sure it doesn't get spun around because that can happen where the shirt gets twisted and the collar ends up at the bottom and the bottom ends up at the collar. Um, and then when you're done, you can't really fix it when it's behind the person. So I'll take the sleeve, the cuff, I will hold it with the tail of the shirt that needs to end up on the opposite side. So right now I've got the left sleeve on and I need to end up over at the right hand side. I go to about the um, elbow with the shirt and I'm going to tuck this under the deceased at that point and bring it up through to the other side. The reason I don't go all the way up and around is kind of like the pant leg. If you pull the sleeves up too far, you can't get the other hand in the sleeve. So you want to go in this middle point and then pull up from there. So if you're by yourself, you want to roll the deceased to tuck it under. Depending on their weight, what I like to do what I like to do is lift the leg and roll the individual towards me, which will make the top half also lift. Another tactic you can do is lifting from the head. So I've got my shirt where I want it. And if you just lift the head, then the torso lifts as well. If you kind of throw that shirt under, and then you look can see where you're at and can grab it. Now, with a real person, their wrists and things may be a little more movable. His arms don't go this way, and so that's going to be a problem for me as I'm trying to dress him. But if you usually get that shirt down about the hip area, you can slip that other hand in to pull everything upward. Forgot to open this cuff before I put that on. So I'm going to do that now. Interested to see what about this surprises you guys. I know you ask often about dressing people and if there's tips or tricks or, you know, um, what parts are hard or not. So then I got both sleeves on. Again, make sure your shirt tails are pointed down and then you're going to lift. And slide it right up. And 
Now Randy is getting styled for his visitation. You're gonna button up the collar. Buttoning anything with gloves on is so hard. <laughs> um, I just put the gloves on just because I'm in the prep room, so I'm not worried about Randy being contagious or anything, but just for the sake of video, I did put gloves on so you guys could see just what we're doing. So you get the idea, we would button him up. Um, now, his collar is really loose because he's lost weight, I'd say. Randy has lost weight because he's been sick. His shirt's quite baggy. His pants are a bit baggy, but baggy's good for pants because we want more weight rather or more room in here if they've lost weight rather than it being tight around the abdomen and like pulling um, on that abdomen because we don't want pressure. However, with the neck, you know, we want to make sure it looks as tailored as we can. So now we're going to put the tie on Randy. Sometimes his cosmetics are already done or maybe he has cream on his face. So if we were to just flip the collar, that is going to rub all over his face and it's going to destroy and ruin the collar. So we want to get paper towel. And what you want to do is put the paper towel inside the neckline like this all the way around so it's hanging over. You can button it back up. And then you have this hanging around. So then when you flip, you can put this up, then flip the collar. And then the collar is not resting against his face at all. It's resting against the paper towel. So then you're going to put that tie on. You can do whichever kind of tie style you want. Sometimes I make it up as I go. <laughs> it really just depends. It depends on the tie too. Sometimes people will bring ties in already tied because that's how the person left it in their um, closet. So if you're a student and you're going to want to be an embalmer, you're going to need to learn how to tie ties, people. Um, so you're going to want to practice. Then you flip it back down and get it all straightened up. I know this tie doesn't match the shirt, but just go with me. And then you already have your barrier for if you're going to cosmetize. Now it's time to cut clothing. This is something a lot of people didn't realize happened in the prep room, but we do cut clothing to help it fit the deceased better. So we're going to get Randy's shirt cut. Now, sometimes we may need to cut pants. Like I said, if the pants are too tight, this may happen with jeans a lot, especially that we just cut from the back of the pants down into like, not all the way front to the groin, but right at the base of the butt cheeks-ish. <laughs> so that you get a little more space. We have to have to do this with belts too. Belts may not fit the disease after that we cut the back of the belt and place it in the loops so that it looks like their belt is on, but yet it is cut in the back. As I said, a lot of what we do is for the presentation and for the show of what we do. So you don't see kind of what's going on on the back side. So cutting a shirt. Literally, we are cutting the shirt, making sure what is the front and back, because I do know some people who have 
cut dresses down the front because they didn't realize which side was which. So you end up with your two halves of a shirt. Always you want to make sure the deceased is really clean underneath where they're like laying. You don't want to place your hand under and move that shirt under like earlier and end up getting like a blood clot and then your shirt gets all stained so you can't use it. So I'm doing the same thing where I put my arm through first, grab the hand and move the shirt on and then buckle the sleeve or the cuff right at the sleeve and then move the shirt up into place. This technique is definitely less labor intensive because you're not lifting the individual as much. And so some people like it because you're not maybe jostling around the individual as much. It's also saving a little back um, for the funeral director. Then we're going to do the other side as well. One thing to keep in mind if you're bringing clothing is whether they need long sleeves, higher neck, were they in the hospital? If they were in the hospital, err on the side of bringing long sleeves because they most of them likely have IVs, bruising on their hands from those IVs, things like that, that you want to bring a higher neckline and a longer sleeve to help with. So now, Randy's got his shirt back on this way. So then we go through buttoning again. I'm just going to button a few for sake of visual. It's kind of like a cooking show where we kind of pretend a little, but we, we do some of it just so you get the idea. Same with the top button. We've got all this loose, so what are we going to do with that? So we're going to take one of our big S-curve needles and just some suture thread. And I'm going to suture the back of his shirt so that it's tight in around his neck. Now you don't go through both the collar and the layover collar, you just go through the base collar. This is where some people can really poke themselves, so you have to be careful. You go so that there's one hanging out and there's one on the inside. The one on the inside is going to be the base that you go with on the other side. And you're gonna place it through the other side as well. And that's going to allow you to tie it in under his head. Now we're not, we don't have to use a head block on Randy here because his head is free floating um, because that's how he's formed. So if there was a head block, you might move it quick, do a tie, and then put it back in. Um, but so you just tie this up and then you would cut off the excess string. And you can see that it's pulled tight. You can straighten out the shirt. And here's the big, you don't get the gap here like you did last time when his shirt was not cut. Do his tie again. Again, you're gonna to wanna to place this inside. Lay it out over. His suture came off, because I didn't tie it tight enough. I didn't knot it or put it in a bow like I should have. Do that, we flip up the collar. We tie up Randy's tie, whichever way. Don't mock my tie skills, guys. 
You never know what's going to come out when I do a tie. It's not going to be my best tie, but we're going to go with it here. Flip this down, get it all situated, and Randy's ready for his casket. So this here is our body lift. Most funeral homes have them. Some have different versions of them where maybe there's tracks in the ceiling um, that the straps and everything come down from. So pros and cons to all of them. Um, but this is the one we have here and that's what we're gonna use to place the straps under Randy. We lift him, then move the casket in to place him in. Sorry, today we're not placing him in a casket um, because the caskets are for use for the actual deceased. So you're gonna have to like imagine a little bit on that part. But we're gonna place some straps on him now and I'm gonna kind of just give you an overview of how we do that. So the straps are just a fabric. So as you can imagine, sometimes these get dirty and yucky, so you do have to sanitize them and clean them and wash them once in a while. They do come in different lengths. So there's going to be a shorter one, typically, that goes around the head and a shorter one that goes around the feet. Then you have larger ones for the abdomen and the hips, buttocks area. And you just literally place them under and then just lay them like that so that they're on. And you keep going down the body. Um, so you're gonna place them under, and this may take lifting and maneuvering as you do usually anyway. So this one at the arms you want to be right across this part of the body. So you're gonna get the elbows, and those elbows are gonna stay up in the strap, and you're gonna get this solid, larger sometimes part of a deceased that you wanna have all encompassed in one. So we have that. Now, Randy is kinda of difficult <laughs> in terms of how his body has been created. Um, so I don't know if we're gonna be able to lift part of him the way we would a deceased just because it's not completely accurate, but we're gonna give it a whirl. So this part, like I said, is gonna go right under his groin hip area. That's where a lot of your weight is, especially certain individuals, so you want it there. And then our last one, is gonna go under the ankles or calf area. Okay, so then we move this machine in the lift. And it is a hydraulic machine. These do have weight restrictions. Sometimes you have to ride on the machine and it takes a few of you because you want to try and counterbalance if the individual is at a certain weight. Um, so you have to know your machine and know what it does. This machine has a max capacity of a thousand pounds. However, if an individual weighed a thousand pounds up on this, um, I would have a lot of hands and prayers around just because it's just a little machine that I wouldn't entrust a whole human to make sure that they didn't, you know, it didn't tip over or something. That would make me really scared. So then you're going to hook the straps to the crossbar that is associated with it. I like to put my foot on the base so that it's just a little stability as I'm lifting the person. And you can see that they are starting to lift up and off the table. Often if you don't have that bottom strap 
all the way down to the ankles. The feet will hang, which is okay, as long as you have someone that can help you lift. But as you can see, they are up and off the table. So once he's up in the air and over the casket, we're gonna just pretend this is the casket. We release the pressure on the lift. And down he goes. You want to make sure it doesn't go down so fast that this hits the person in the face. You just want to relieve the pressure enough that you can get the straps off. The straps just easily come off. In the midsection when you're in the casket, they're not going to slide like they would on a table. So you have to hold. Sometimes you have to lift a little bit. Lift these people to get them out. You don't want the flat part behind. I don't like the flat part behind because it doesn't bend as it comes out under the deceased. This piece is gonna come out a lot smoother out and under the individual. So you just take all of the straps off. They're coming off obviously a lot easier than if he was over in his casket. And then you move the lift out of the way. So then, depending on the funeral home, you may lift the person and have them suspended in the air for a little bit while you move the table out and then move the casket under them. Or if it's a big enough space, you may have the casket set off to one side where you lift them move the whole lift and place them down into the casket. Just depends on your setup. But the lift is very crucial. Um, you don't wanna lift physically each individual over in the casket. I did that a lot, a lot at the beginning of my career when there was two of us always, we would just two of us move the individual. However, saving your back also, people do poop or purge or leak as they're up and if you're holding them and your arms are under them that can happen on you um, and so you can soil your clothing pretty quickly depending on the scenario however this is how we dress and casket and go over to that casket with an individual so hopefully this answered some of your questions about how I get Randy ready. Um, and thank you to the fire department for allowing me to borrow my buddy Randy. And I'm betting he will show up in another video when we have to work on maybe removals and things. So thanks guys for joining me. I really appreciate it. Post all your questions below. Give shout outs to Randy if you want. <laughs> and thank you for joining. Bye. Mm -hmm.